Okay, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Bing. Um, got home from work. Had had to walk home from work. Got home. Got a huge fucking headache after watching the episode of Corey Wa Zombie Desuka. Went to sleep for two hours. Woke up like ten, like ten, yeah, about ten minutes ago. Took Tylenol ten minutes ago because the headache is still there and it's still like resonating with me. So. Full warn, this is not going to be the greatest of reviews, but I am a reviewer, that is what I do, and I shall review. So, let's go! So, what's up guys, you have the prequel so you know the little backstory behind why I'm, I'm, this review may not be as great, even though the fucking episode was awesome. Well, the episode was cool, I enjoyed the episode, the episode was good, the episode was like a B. It's a fucking B. I don't use it graded, but right now, my brain's kind of tripping balls. The episode was cool. So, as, as I said, it's episode three of uh, Kurewa Zombie Desuka. And let's pretty much get into it. The first half of the fucking episode is more comedy related than anything. Then like, the episode kind of starts off with uh, Harna having these weird. Maso shoujo dreams, I guess is the best way to put it, because she's killing Megalo, and then she tries to kill the other thing, and the other thing turns out to be her favorite food, which is pudding. And then the fucking title starts, and I thought that was pretty funny. Surprisingly, this episode has, doesn't really focus on Sarah, like I thought it would. Because, you know, they introduced Harna, and they had character development for Harna. You, you see, there's like a hint of it, because he goes to school... And all three girls are just in the house while he's at school. And she's like, I wonder if he made it to school okay. Because he's kind of just... He, she has one of those slight moments. And then it's just overshadowed with, well, he's a piece of shit. Or he's a dumbass for, for walking in the sun when he's a fucking zombie and shit. Now, I don't think I've mentioned this, but he has a best friend, Orito. He actually does something in this episode. I mean, he's still comedy written, but he, he does something else. First off, what the girls are doing, <laughs> the girls end up fighting for pudding, pretty much. And it's funny because what happened is the end of the episode, not plot-wise, but just with the pudding fight. And then you have um, uh, Aikawa is hanging out with his friend Arito, who has been shot down by every girl in the school that he's been trying to offer to go bowling with, so he ends up going bowling with uh, Aikawa. Apparently, he ends up buying, like, this demon mask that a whole bunch of girls end up buying, which is really funny because Aikawa notices this, and he's like, please don't let Orito turn around. Because all the girls behind him he has, like, all these, the same demon masks he bought. And he's like, what kind of child, what kind of, no girl would be caught dead wearing those demon masks. And it's, it's pretty funny. As I said, I'm a little fucked up. That's why I'm not laughing at it like I would usually. Um... So they're bowling, and Ayakawa decides that he can never let, like, Arito the entire time is just talking about girls. And Ayakawa decides he will never let Arito know that he lives in a house with three other girls because it would freak him out, he would lose their mind, he would lose his mind, and he's afraid that he would die off of it. And ironically, at the same damn time, um... <laughs> all three girls at the bowling alley in the alley next to him. Which I think was because of competition for the pudding. Because literally, they, they, that, that's really what they do the entire episode is the competition for the pudding. They play. They're, they play, um, I forgot the, damn, the name of the, I think it's like Mahjong or some shit, where you have a stack of like blocks, wooden blocks, that make like this little tower, and you have to pull out one and put it on the top, and Whoever makes it fall loses. And I will say her Harna does like this cool thing which is which Sarah's like, Man, you can't pull out any more blocks. And this bitch runs over here with the fucking chains doll and she spins it just enough to knock one out. And I don't know how the thing is sustaining midair, knocks one out, has it bounce everywhere around, and it lands on top. And she, I mean she does say that she's a genius, so I guess it makes sense. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I guess the bowling was a part of that. And this is where 
And Kyle starts freaking out because he's like, oh, God, why are they here? And Harden is over there waving at him and shit. Also, just to know there's a lot of fan service in this episode, but most of it's really due to uh, Orito's uh, fantasizing. He, like, fantasizes what kind of panties and bras and shit they wear. And, like, it's weird. It's so fucking weird. And then he fantasizes even more when he does find out that uh they're that they live with Aikawa. Pretty much um uh, what's in also another competition game they play, which I gotta to bring up, is that they do play Twister. Which is funny because the entire time Sarah's just asking her asking Harna about like questions about her life. But getting back to the bowling, I think that's yeah, that's the only two games they play. Getting back to the bowling, um <laughs> He tries to walk off to the bathroom. He's like, you just came from the bathroom. It's like, man, it's your turn to bowl. And Hard is over there waving at him. And he's just like, shit. He walked over. He's like, don't you hear me, Ayimu? Which is his last name. Ayimu. Um, and he's like, he's like, no. My name isn't Ayimu. My name, he puts on the demon mask. And he's like, my name is Demon Iron Moon, and it goes into like the little, you know, halfway point of the episode, just a little pause and shit. And it's funny for two reasons. One, because he realizes that he said his last name in the title of Demon. He said Demon Iron Moon, which is his last name. And he's just like, shit. I said my last name. I can even maybe I can just play it off with a joke, and then. uh uh, you and Sarah come over, and Sarah's such a dick. She's still like, hmm. It's like, you know what? Keep the mask on. You look better with it on. It, it improves your look. And he's like, all right. He's like, you do know them. He's like, shit. I can't even play this off as a joke anymore. Um, and pretty much what that, that's what it boils down to. Um, and. Orito doesn't take this well. He starts like banging his head on the fucking bowling pins and shit. He 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 kind of goes from serious to depressed like six times during because he first he fantasizes like so how far have you gotten with him? And he's like I, I can't do that for for an obvious reason because they will beat me into a sandbag. He's like what are you talking? He's like. Dude, don't you think it's worth it, though? It's like, no, 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 I don't think you understand. I'm not talking about they'll just hurt me. I'm talking about they will literally turn me into sand. They will, like, beat the shit out of me. <laughs> He's like, I challenge you to what? A bowling match. If I win you, I start living in your house. I kind of wins. So it didn't mean that. They didn't even fucking show them bowling. It was just like a cutscene. And it's like, damn. It was a cutscene showing off Aikawa's score. And then it's just like, him going, damn, I Kyle, you're good at this, aren't you? And then um, his phone goes off, and a girl sending him a text message. And Harna and fucking Sarah and fucking you are really curious and, like, look at his phone and shit. Surprisingly, they don't really do that much of bitch shit, honestly, which I thought was kind of weird. Actually, I'm kind of curious what the hell they're going to do all day. Which apparently is just a dick around. Oh. Sorry, this is when you wake up from a nap and they go right into a review. And my head still hurts, but I said I finished this. Stop being a bitch, trap. Ah. Um. So, and apparently he's like, "I right, Kyle, come with me to the hospital," because apparently that's the girl who's texting him. This is where the episode kind of goes from comedy away and goes into plot, and I was like, "Whoa, shit!" Because what you find out at the end of the episode kind of freaks you out a little bit. Especially because of what the last episode did. So it's just like, what the fuck? Pretty much. I think the girls, yeah, the go girls go back home because they don't even follow Yukawa and shit. So it's not like they're, they seem they don't really depend, they're not like in this romantic shit where they're depending on each other. They're kind of just doing their own thing. But Arito wanted Yukawa to come with him to the hospital because the girl who texted him is quote unquote like a little sister to him. And wanted to see him anyway. Wanted to see Aikawa too. Which makes no sense considering the fact that uh, they get up there and the girl's name is Kyoko. And apparently she was attacked by the serial killer. And he's like, holy shit. Because it's the same damn serial killer. And apparently the girl knows him back in like middle school or sixth grade or something. 
and Aikawa doesn't remember. And the and this episode's title has some like yes the I think this title this episode's title is like some with twin tails. It's because the girl uh thinks that uh Ayakawa thinks she's cute with twin tails, which is pretty much ponytails. That's what they that's what ponytails are translated into from their Japanese like the Japanese word for twin ponytails, when you translate it back into English it doesn't say ponytails, it says twin tails. So I guess that's what it is. Um, so, the girl's name's Kyoko, cutest fucking thing, like, so sweet, she'll give you diabetes, kind of cute, and I guess she has a crush on Aikawa, even though Aikawa doesn't remember her, which I find really funny, and shit, um, there's a couple of fans ever shots with her, but it's kind of like, really dumb fans, it's not, it's like, it's not that much fan, but I will say this episode had right in the most fan service. I thought that was a little ridiculous. Because it threw me off because I hadn't seen that much fan service in the last two episodes. But it was usually most of the fan service through fantasizing. And ever since Sarah came into the picture, she has just become like a ridiculous bunch of, fan, of fucking uh, fan service. Where it's like hard and it's like lolly fan service, which is kind of like, why? But anyways, um... So, he leaves. Orito leaves because he went to go put the flowers that they brought in a vase. While Aikawa asks Kyoko about, did she see her, the attacker, and what they looked like? And she did. And pretty much, her description boils down to it being almost an exact description of Miss Hellsight. Or you. And this started fucking with me. He started, he didn't like freak out, but he he, he got a little paranoid in his mind. And he's like, and then she, he's like, it's like, it's like, why do you ask? And he's like, uh, no reason. I feel like I know who that is, but maybe I'm I'm probably wrong. It's like, it's like, well, it's like, well, how do you, and then she like runs up and jumps on him. It's like, cause she was, I guess she, she's still scared. I mean, damn, she just. She got a tad and she's in the hospital. And, and apparently this person killed her, both of her parents. So, you know, it made sense. But she was freaking out and shit. Holding him because he was, she was really scared and shit. Because it's like, it looks like that the person had no emotion in their eyes. And he's like, oh shit. You doesn't have emotion in her eye. Miss Helsa doesn't have emotion in her eyes. And it's like, holy crap. And that's really where the paranoia is at. And he starts getting really paranoid of you. Um, not right, not like when they cry, kind of paranoid, but it's still pretty fucking paranoid. And it ends on, um, apparently what I think it is, is that Harna's, like, using her chainsaw to, like, shoot baseballs at Sarah, and Sarah's knocking them away with her style, which I did not realize that almost everywhere that comes out of her mouth has something to do with Sumabashi style. Su 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 Sumabashi secret sword technique, because... She says that shit almost like 20 times. Like, I feel like at the end of the show, I'm going to be able to do a reel of how many times she says Sumabashi. And if how bored I am, and depending, yeah, depending on how bored I am, I might do it. <sighs> Anyways, and the reason why I said it'd be funny at the end of the episode is because at the end of the episode, they're still fighting for the yogurt. Uh, I think it's yogurt. I think that's what I've been saying the entire time. Yogurt? No. Is it, it's like yogurt or pudding. I forgot what you call it, but anyways, the thing they've been fighting over the entire episode, you is eating. <laughs> She's literally eating it in front of them fighting over it, and it's like, and she takes one bite, and you see her blush, because for whatever reason, she has like shit written on her face, I have no idea where that shit came from, she has like these little cute drawings in her cheeks, and then she eats it, and you can see her blushing through the little drawings in her cheeks, and it's kind of funny, because at the same moment, is going to become very paranoid of her, but... That's about the episode, and to, and to me, it's a pretty good episode. I don't, the fan service didn't really throw me off because I'm a, I, if you've seen uh, his best friend in other episodes, you can kind of tell he's kind of perverted anyway, but it was still funny. Uh, I'm kind of curious about this Kyogo girl, like how much of a plot, how much in the story she's gonna be because you don't see her in the opening or the ending. Well, I think you see her in the ending actually, you don't see her in the opening. So I think she's like a minor character. She's probably around Orito's level as a character, but she might be more of an important character right now because 
the whole they've been attacked. I mean, I I always been killed by the same person she was attacked by. That may possibly be Hellside. Because remember, he doesn't remember anything after he died. He just remembers every he remembers waking up and fucking Hellside being like being like, Hey, don't die or and I'll bring you back to life or I'll take care of you and shit, so Episode was pretty solid. I enjoyed it. Uh, fan service kind of threw me off. Still kind of hate Sarah. I really love Kyoko now. Not because she's she had fan service, you know, being in a hospital, but just because she's like a really nice and sweet character. Um, I guess two two two, two things I want you to write in the comments. First off, as I said, the link to the episode will be in the description. Uh, it seems the headaches are going away a little bit. And um, yeah. Link to the episode will be in the description. I got two comments. What do you think about the episode? And do you prefer, and do you like Demon Ayumu? Or, and the third question will be, do you like Kyoko with twin tails or no twin tails? Twin tails or no twin tails? You know, ponytails or not? But anyways, that is my review for uh, Corey Wa Zombie Desuka episode three. 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 Ah! If you don't know why I did this, because I did this the first time, because I'm so used to doing the pizza sign, so I'm like, three! I went, three! Fuck! <laughs> I'm starting to get headaches going away. Tylenol works is amazing, people. You need to know this. Um, but anyway, it's like a game, play to win. Oh, did I come up with a catchphrase for Cory Wild Zombie Desuka? Oh, oh, one last thing. This is totally unrelated. People who want me to do Pokemon reviews, they are coming. The reason why I haven't done it is because the last two episodes are out raw, but no one has supped one of them. And one of them has been out for like two weeks. The other one has been out for almost a week. If, if you want me to sub it, you give me the first. You guys, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys to send me links in message or inbox, even right on my fucking channel, the link to the newest episode of Pokemon Best Wishes Subbed. Because that's what I need. I can't fucking find it. But anyways, as my review likes again for the win. Uh, I don't think I have a catchphrase for this. So I guess I'll say, keep the dead alive. Oh, shit. That's nice. Keep the devil dead. Keep the dead alive. Peace.